Right, so I guess start by explaining what uh, what was your kind of thought process behind putting music to the side and just focusing solely on poetry now. Um, it was a long, a long chain of events. I never really got along with a lot of musicians. Um, and the way that, the way the industry treats people, um, it makes some of the people pretty desperate. And I understand that, but it makes them very difficult to deal with. And a lot of them weren't really, really um, straight, more hustlers than musicians. And um, it was like, it was a culture of beat makers that, <clears throat> even, I remember even recording my vocals and the guy, we, he would never make the music when I was there because he was like, you know, he needed his, his own space. Um, for him to protect, uh, perfect what he was doing. But when I was recording my vocals, he would just press record and then go start t stirring his tea and go on his phone, you know? So, and even when they were mixing my vocals, there wasn't really much care put into it. And it was like, you just, I just got a feeling that um, if they could sell instrumentals, if they were as popular as songs without personalities on them, they would have done that but they resented the fact that they needed to have a personality on their beats to sell more records. So I didn't like the disrespect. And um, so that was the first thing. And then um, his nose is hurt now. Doesn't matter, we can edit. Okay, sorry. I was wondering if I should put him Can you uh, repeat the question? Did she take it with your uh, story? Sorry? If, if she asks you a question, if you can repeat it a little bit. Uh, your question. So, if I, so yeah. like when I say, yeah. why do you... No, I'm not going to do that. We just yeah. put a voice in. No, but we have a voice. We, we, we are not going to have a voice. All right. uh, this is not picking her up? A little bit. Almost nothing. Okay. Yeah. And we can put the we can put the question in front. Okay. That's good then. Done deal. <laughs> yeah, so where was I? You were uh, felt disrespected. Yeah. Um and then it was like we're doing shows. And I, I predominantly work with beat makers. And then I'm out the front sweating. And they look behind me, and after the guys press play on the CD player, he's just rolling the joint. Or I had one incident that the guy was drinking so much behind me that um, I remember like some strange echo coming in, and I turned around and he just went, and he was all merry and happy, and then collapsed. You know what I mean? So. So they were they were the first signs that there was. There's, becoming a split as well. And I just felt like what I was saying and a lot of people around me also felt that what I was saying wasn't really coming out because of the beats, you know? That's and what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, do you feel like your work has, like it stands out a bit more without, is it almost, is it like necessary actually to even have music on it? Because you're... I thought so. I thought so when I was dumbing myself down and when I wasn't... Um, I was very insecure about what I was doing. And... Um, yeah, I just... You know, and also at the time, I think, you know, money was an issue for me. And, and you're... Yeah, money was an issue for me, and and you know your 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 words will be carried a lot more through. Me. There's a bigger market in 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 music and stuff like that. Well, I thought there was, and um, but there was a bigger market. But then you end up cutting up your pie with a lot of people that don't even care about you, having a piece. So um, there was that, and then. 
I watched a lecture, a lecture um, with a Muslim scholar who was saying that, you know, it's unlawful for Muslims to be getting involved in music because what comes along with it was, you know, the narration was saying that they were going to call music by something else to make it lawful. And what went along with it was alcohol, loose women, and that was a prophetic thing said 1,400 years ago. And then if you look at hip hop and stuff like that today, those elements are even advertised, you know. And um, so I, what I did, I stopped listening to music and then seeing naked women and the pushing of alcohol and drugs stopped in my radar. So I know it came with the music, because as soon as I stopped listening to music, I stopped seeing those elements in my life completely. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about a particular type of uh, music, most urban music, R&B, dance music, hip hop, they all seem to come with these elements. You know, you've got people with choruses called party and bullshit, and, then, and like that's what life's about. So I just had a lot, just had a lot of conflicts with it. And then I, I, I Googled open mic nights for like where bands play and stuff like that. And there was only a few. And then I Googled um, spoken word and it was loads every day of the week, you know? And then, uh, then I looked at when you put, to, you can put together a digital book and, um, and the packet, the actual the selling of it is cheaper. I don't have to rent a studio. I can just record my voice, put that on an album digitally, write the words down, do a digital book. I can put my words on vinyl. You know what I mean? I can put my words on photographs. You know what I mean? I can narrate films that I do. So there's just so many, there's more avenues for me. Cool. Stop being a lunatic. Um, right, so, cool, eat some nice meat, knock yourself out. Um, did, were you okay with that answer, or did you want to expand on that a bit more? Yeah, so, I mean, it was just all those elements that came together that just said, you know, I should just try my, my spoken word thing. And and that's it, you know. I should, you know. I just got a little bit more braver. And I, I believe that the human voice. I mean, I said uh, something to somebody once, and it was like, I remember before I was a Muslim when I was quite promiscuous. That I said that even though when I've been on stage, or said words with music, I've never um, aroused a woman to a degree. But when I've just used my voice, 100% all the time. And the other scale of it, when I've done stuff with music, I've never intimidated a man. But in the conversation, I can make them sweat. So words are there was always a lot more powerful, you know. Mm. My only problem is, is I'm quite shy around people I don't know. And part of my reservedness is that I'll use them very monotone. So I won't let you hear the emotions in my voice because I don't know you. If I know you, then I've got lots of different inflictions that I use. So that was a problem. But now I'm working with a friend of mine that I've known for years. And um, he has this uh, tube amp that really makes the voice warm. And he's the only person I, that... Um, he's the only person that I know <laughs> this dog is crazy. Are you finished? <laughs> Steady trying to mess up this man's interview. Hey. hey! Stop now. Come on, chill. Just move your foot. Like, but far, but sharp. There you go. I've put him in his crate, but he's going to rip his bed up. He's like, he gets yeah. Yeah. All right.
Just chill out. Yeah, so it just got to a point where I was getting so many signs to just do, you know, do my thing, and this great opportunity opened up with my friend. Where, and then he was like, we recorded. How many pieces did he say we recorded? Forty. Oh no no no, the older. Yeah. Was it last man? I don't know, maybe thirty or something, or more. Thirty or forty pieces, yeah. and then each day I come back, I listen to them, and he goes, right, you need to put more emotion in your voice. And before, when I used to recite, I didn't even connect with the words, you know. And um, I didn't even connect connect with the words, you know. I just kind of spat them from memory. And now I have to connect with every word that I'm saying and put the appropriate emotion on it. So it's almost like I'm playing the words like an instrument using, and you can't sing, but you have to use very slight, subtle notation in order for it to affect the person and that's listening to it, you know what I mean? So it's a real, I'm in a real dojo at the moment, you know what I mean? And I like that. It's like a sport to get it right, you know? And, um, yeah, so since I've stopped listening to music, you know, because I had a drug addiction before, so it, was all, it all came hand in hand with this, all this numbing down. This was frequencies numb you down, drugs numb you down. And now I just want to see, I want to take these things out of my life and just start to open up again with my senses and my sensitivities, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, sound really jars me because I'm hypersensitive now. Do you know what I mean? Can you just do a shot of the of the dog and stuff so people get what's going on? I don't mind him walking around, it just makes the interview unique. <laughs> 